loaded with 54 railroad tank cars of highly explosive fuel. Well, maybe not quite explosive by the scientist's de definition of it, but it burns so fast, it might as well be called explosive. Well, that's why we don't like the word blast off. We yeah. use lift off. Right. It's, uh, it's RP-1. It's jet fuel, very similar to the fuel that uh, jet liners use. Uh, it has to be supplied with a liquid uh, uh, oxygen oxidizer because it burns so fast it would burn up all the air around it so you got to have extra air pumped into it and all of that uh, creates really what if if the explosion were contained if you put this thing in a container where it really went all at once would be equivalent of a million tons of TNT <laughs> that's a powerful powerful blast of course it doesn't happen that way it burns a little slower, but it but it goes up in quite a quite a blast if it goes. As we've seen from from spacecraft in the in the past, uh, I don't mean to suggest here that anybody's anticipating that's going to happen. That's why it's shut down. It's a safety feature, and presumably uh, everything is in is, is in good hands. But uh, it, it's a touchy moment. You can't deny that. They they're pointing out uh, from mission control to the various news media that the astronauts are in no immediate danger and uh, that should be emphasized again although all of these missions have their potential of danger certainly you realize what tremendous power is in all of that fuel as funneled through those five jet engines uh, when you realize that uh, that they use up that amount of fuel those 54 railroad tank cars mm. in two minutes and 41 seconds and boost this whole complex, 3,131 tons of it, that's more than the submarine Nautilus weighs, mm. uh, to, uh, to 41 miles height before the second stage takes over. We're told now that they're going to recycle to 22 minutes. The problem appears to be in the S-4B stage uh, that was the uh, television pool was advised of that, although we haven't heard it directly from Mission Control, I gather. Now, that's interesting, of course. The S-4B has nothing to do with the launch at this point. Uh, it's very significant later. Yeah. And it must be used to get them into Earth orbit and out of Earth orbit on the way to the moon. But uh, it doesn't even fire up until after orbit has been achieved, and then it uh, fires to get out of Earth orbit, uh, as you, you say. We're going to get uh, a full report, I think, from Mission Control in a very short order, uh, but uh, it, I know it perhaps will confirm that information we got just a moment ago uh, that they're going to recycle to 22 minutes. We haven't heard that uh, elsewhere. It almost seems as if a guidance malfunction might be in there, and uh, this, this could be the anomaly, the flaw, the, the, the fault in the countdown. Yeah. We're supposed to hear something from Mission Control again about now. Let's uh, listen in there and try to pick up that word from Mission Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're continuing our hold at the T minus 30 second mark as the launch team assesses our problem. At this time, swing arm number nine is going back uh, to the 12 degree park position. This is in a position about uh, 15 to 20 feet from the spacecraft. All sweeping procedures have uh, proceeded normally. We're continuing our hold while we assess the problem at T minus 30 seconds. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Well, uh, Mission Control isn't confirming publicly uh, yet uh, the word that was passed to the pool uh, that uh, the problem appeared to be in the S-4B, that's the third stage, uh, and that they would recycle to 22 minutes when they get the problem cleared away. Uh, however, uh, that was just an informal word, and uh, we haven't had it confirmed as yet. Putting the swing arm back to this position simply means that it can be swung over to the spacecraft in rapid order if they decide to do that. Uh, it's just a slightly more safer position than further back. They're just edging up on the uh, spacecraft a little bit, as it were. Leo Krupp, North American uh, Rockwell, who uh, is on all of the Apollo flights, uh, is the chief 
test astronaut for uh, North American. Uh, Leo, I wonder if by any chance you've got any theories as to what might be the problem out there. Uh, no, sir, Walter, I don't. I uh, was observing the, the countdown just like everyone else and was very disappointed when they hit the hold. Uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone realizes the crew is in no danger. The, the, hold, the hold is precautionary and uh, the crew have safe the systems in the command module. And as soon as the NASA determines what the uh, what the problem is, they'll cycle back and probably pick up the count. Assistant to mission control. Uh, position at the 12 degree position. Point out that the window we have tonight extends to 1.31 a.m. So we have some time here to assess the problem uh, and then continue, recycle and continue our countdown. We're continuing to hold at the 32nd mark at this time. T minus 30 seconds on holding. This is Kennedy launch control. NASA has now confirmed to us, Leo, that it is in the S-4B, that when they uh, do get the problem cleared away, it's a 22-minute recycle, uh, which means that uh, once they say, ready to go again, we've got 22 minutes until launch, which is going to be a long 22 minutes <laughs> for uh, those fellows up there yes, it is. in uh, the America command ship, as they call it. They call their lunar module the Challenger, as you know. Well, hey, what's it like uh, once you've gotten ready to go and then have to sit? What happens? You're keyed, you're ready, and the game is almost called on you. You know, that is a, a tough one because the guys are strapped in very... ...to get to the in this century. The last of the Apollo series, the Russians have no moon operations planned, and uh, that has been said by Mr. Fletcher, the head of the NASA these days, that if there are to be any more exploration missions into space, there will have, probably have to be joint missions of the Russians and the, the Americans, and that will be some time off. So for some of the consequences of this hold on this mission, uh, with the count now almost uh, T-minus six minutes, let's go to more... Uh, although scientists and some of uh, uh, civilians down here might be disappointed in that the television transmission during the important transposition and docking maneuver that would come later this morning if the launch uh, is in fact held, that that television transmission will not be permitted uh, for one of several reasons. The most important reason that upon launch, the, uh, the angle of the launch is a little bit different. It puts the uh, ground stations in a different position, and therefore the... Uh, TV signal would not be of the nature that uh, we might be able to understand what it was all about. So uh, transposition and docking, of course, it comes about four hours and 20 minutes after uh, launch. It is when the command service module leaves the main body of the spacecraft, turns around, pitches over, and comes back, locks in with the lunar module, and plucks that away. So uh, let's listen into this. The launch. Bill Schick, the test supervisor, indicating that we are go to continue. Mission Director Chet Lee just verifies that we are go for launch. Safety indicates that we have a go. First stage test conductor has charge of those five first stage engines, which will give us the lift off, has indicated a go for launch. Launch operations manager Paul Donnelly. Also giving us a doctor says we are go for launch. We've passed the five minute arm number nine. This is the access arm spacecraft is coming back to retract position. It moves back alongside the mobile launch tower and it will remain there now through the final portion of the countdown and the launch. At the T minus 60 second mark, 20 nozzles will start flame deflector deluge of 13,000 gallons per minute water pouring down on that flame deflector. So a great deal of what is seen at launch time, which looks like smoke, is actually steam as this water cool the area and to cool the equipment uh, alongside of the uh, launch tower as the water also pours across the swing arms in the launch tower. We're approaching the four minute mark in the countdown now. T minus four minutes, five seconds, and continuing to count. At the four minute mark, we'll stand by for a final go from Norm Carlson, the launch vehicle test conductor. He's given a go. The uh, launch operations manager now switching over to the uh, Astrocom circuit. This is the circuit that the astronauts, the launch operations manager, 
and the uh, spacecraft communicator will remain on. We uh, have this private circuit to keep extraneous talk off of there. They are checking in. They are checking in now on the Astrocom. They are. Spacecraft has indicated they are ready. Instrument unit uh, ready light has come on. S1C, that's the first stage. Preparations are now complete. The three minute mark. There's quiet in the firing room now as the engineers and technicians are monitoring their consoles. They're monitoring the various rates, pressures, temperatures. They can override the terminal sequencer if they uh, cite a problem that it has not picked up. We are on that terminal sequencer now. We've passed the three minute mark. T minus two minutes, 47 seconds and counting as we are on the terminal sequencer. At the T minus 50 second mark, we'll be looking for that critical power transfer. This is where we transfer from the external power source, which has been feeding the three stages of the launch vehicle, to internal power, that's to the flight batteries uh, aboard the space vehicle. It's expected that uh, given proper weather conditions, people will be observing this flight from as much as 500 miles away. This includes a large portion of the southeastern United States, the northern tip of Cuba, and the Bahama Islands. Now approaching the two minutes, two minute mark. Mark, T minus two minutes and counting, and the countdown continues to move along smoothly in the uh, terminal countdown portion. The automatic sequencer has stopped the replenishing of the liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen. We're standing by uh, now to the fuel tanks, the second stage fuel tank pressurized, third stage fuel tank pressurized. The countdown continuing to move along smoothly, T minus 90 seconds, T minus 90 seconds, countdown continuing smoothly, S4B propellants uh, pressurized, the indication now using the workaround showing the S4B propellants have been pressurized. Now looking at the liquid hydrogen tanks as uh, they become pressurized, LH2 aboard the second stage pressurized, all propellants now aboard the second stage pressurized as we approach the one minute mark in the countdown. Mark T minus one minute and counting now in the final minute of the countdown. At T minus 45 seconds, Gene Cernan will make the final guidance alignment. This is the uh, mark, T minus 45, and Gene Cernan made that final guidance alignment. That's the last action taken by the crew aboard the space vehicle. Now approaching the half minute mark, T minus 33, T minus 30 seconds, and continuing on now, continuing on at the T minus 26 second mark, T minus 25. We'll get a final guidance uh, release at the T minus 17 second mark. T minus 17, final guidance release. We'll expect engine ignition at 8.9 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, ignition sequence started. All engines are started. We have ignition, 2, 1, 0. We have a liftoff. We have a liftoff and it's lighting up the area. at this 
point. On range, velocity approaching 3,000 feet per second. That's great. And the flight dynamics officers, good on all sources, uh, right on 15 years go. Flight director Gene Kranz taking a status for staging. We say we look good for staging. Good to go here. Inboard cut off. Roger, inboard. Inboard engine shutting down on time as planned. Maximum G forces of about four G's uh, and shut down. Coming up on first stage shut down. And we've had shut down on time on the first stage. Five. Roger, they're looking here, look good. Sure felt like it. I think we saw them all from here. Roger, Jack, and the thrust is going, all five of them, they're running good. Okay, three minutes and we're go. Roger, 17. Okay, we do it. Roger, we confirm the good tip. Mode two. Roger, mode two. has converged and CMC is go. You're going right down the pipe, 17. Okay, Bob, I do confirm guidance. That's the automatic guidance system, the inertial guidance system performing properly. Breakers, and uh, we've seen it all. Ignition, uh, staging, and tower. Roger, right, you got you. Ball 17, now 65 miles high. Okay, four minutes and we're go here, Bob. Roger, Gene, we're going around the road. Let's go here. You're looking real good, Gene. Right down the line. Okay, 4.30 and we're still going forward. Roger, 17, you're go. Let me tell you, this night launch is something to behold. Coming up on five minutes, uh, everything still looks very good in the launch of Apollo 17. The launch vehicle spacecraft now 80 miles high, 230 miles downrange. Five minutes, Gino, and you're go down here. You look great. Okay, Robert, we're going here at five. Seventeen, you said your times are now. All level sets on at eight plus three six. S two shutdown is nine. 